And welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study here at Expedition Church of the Triad. So glad to have you with us and trust you'll uh, receive and be blessed as we dive into the Word of God. Hallelujah. Um, excuse me just a second. I did something I haven't been doing. I forgot to leave my cell phone in the office. So I'm going to mute it. I stopped bringing it to the podium so it wouldn't be a distraction, but I want to make sure that I just... I'm going to put it back away so I can't see it. Hallelujah. All righty. And I'm getting a phone call from R. Billings. Now I'll have to see who R. Billings is later. I don't know who they are. All right. Well, welcome. Hallelujah. Um, let's jump right on in. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, we thank you for our time together in the Word. And we trust the Spirit of God to lead and guide us, to bring revelation, bring understanding, help us to grow in Christ and be more effective in ministering to the world and to the nations and bringing people into the kingdom of God and uh, showing them the way to walk by faith, live in victory, and to do your will. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Well, start talking about last week, and we I think we ran off on a rabbit trail last week. And uh, I think all the beagles got away and ran way out there. We never got back. <laughs> Hallelujah. So let's, let's go in here. We are, we are redeemed from the curse. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, and we talked about how we did get to Genesis 17, 1, where God says, I am the Almighty God, or El Shaddai, and um, the all-sufficient God, the all-powerful God. And in these, this covenant with Abraham, he told him he would be a God to him, and um, he would bring that covenant to pass. And we talked about how he established. Remember, we talked about how God initiated the covenant with Abraham. He initiated it. Abraham didn't come to him looking for, you know, God to do something for him. God initiated that covenant. And um, so God loves us. Amen. And then we, we did talk about um, how the in covenanting, we talked about uh, Liv, uh, Stanley and Livington's travels across Africa and how that there was always when they would cut a covenant with the uh, tribal chiefs that um, there would be a blessing and there would be cursing. We talked about that last week. Amen. And then we, we talked about um, Deuteronomy 28, how that, we, that these are the blessings of the covenant. And then there, there were the curses of the covenant. Hallelujah. And um, we kind of moved into... Um, Matthew chapter 5, all right? And uh, we'll just reread that where Jesus uh, said um, in verse 17, Think not that I am come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. Um, um, uh, you know, it actually said I'm come not to destroy the law or the prophets, but I am come to, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill Amen. Um, a lot of people want to just, you know, just immediately, because of some, some not really accurate teaching, that, um, you know, now that we're in the new covenant and Jesus has come, the old covenant's totally irrelevant. I'm sorry, that got really loud because I, I, my mic was out of, out of line, but it's got it back down where it belongs now. It's just really got, it got louder. <coughs> so sorry, guys. Um, and that's not accurate. Jesus did not come to destroy it, but to fulfill it. And remember, we talked about how it moved from the list of do's and don'ts to relationship. We really majored on relationship last week. Amen. And um, uh, Romans 10, 4. The 10th chapter of the book of Romans, verse 4. And remember, for the Christ is the end of the law. For righteousness to everyone that believeth. Okay? And so he came to do away with a law based righteousness by fulfilling the requirements of the law so that we could enter into a relationship based righteousness. It did not mean God stopped believing or God stopped, God stopped um, declaring that. Adultery is wrong, that murder is wrong, that lusting is wrong, 
God didn't stop. That didn't stop being so. The way to not to overcome and the way to stop living that way was not going to be done through the law, although it was there to tell you not to do it. Uh, Paul writes and says that the law was given as a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, to show our utter inability to fulfill, to do the law. So God sent Jesus to fulfill the law so that we could overcome the sins, you know, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. All, all sin comes under those categories. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, or the pride of life. Okay? And how to overcome them was not just done by a list of do's and don'ts. Okay? As a matter of fact, uh, what we could not do um, through the flesh, amen, we have to do through faith. So he created a faith righteousness in relation, which is in, based in relationship so that we were able to do the law, do what the dictates and demands of the law were, but not by the works of the flesh, but through faith based in a relationship with God. Amen. So it changed everything. It changed everything. All right. So we now record the Galatians, which um, I'm not really sure that we really got to read Galatians. I may have quoted it, um, you know, partially. Don't really think I actually read it. Okay, so Galatians chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. That's supposed to be Galatians chapter 3. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking, that ain't right. <laughs> that just ain't right. Um, you know, when I'm typing sometimes, I get happy fingers. And I hit, I hit the two instead of the three. Okay. Anybody ever done that? Uh, I'm not the only one. Praise the Lord. Um, I, I think it would be, do us good to just go ahead and read Galatians, uh, starting in verse 1 of the chapter. Galatians 3, 1. Oh, foolish Galatians, who, <laughs> J.B. Phillips translation, oh, ye dear idiots of Galatia. Love that translation. Why? Because it just kind of puts it as plain as you can get it. All right. Who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath evidently set forth crucified among you? This only would I learn of you. Received you the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Now remember, Jesus came to fulfill the law, not do away with it, so that we could ha enter into this uh, covenant through relationship. All right? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, you are, are you now made perfect by the flesh? And now, we have a whole denomination that does everything on Saturdays because they're living under Old Testament law in, in regards to those things, you know? So, you know, they're, they're, the Sabbath is Saturday, and you have to do it on Saturday, and, you, you know, they don't eat pork and all this stuff because they're under the Old Testament law, kind of forgot the vision that Peter had. You know, what the Lord has cleansed, thou shalt not call unclean. Okay? And some of that had to do, some of the dietary laws had to do with the inability to properly have the heat and stuff to cook things so it was safe. You know, pork can really make you sick if it's not cooked right. I don't like, I don't like undercooked chicken or pork. You know? Uh, Medea would say, brown, that's just nasty. Okay. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it yet be in vain? He, therefore, that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, 
Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then, they that which be of the faith uh, of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many are under the works of the law are under the curse. For it's written, listen to this, <coughs> Curse is everyone that continueth not in all things which were written in the book of the law to do them. Now let's stop. The things that you were told to do were told in order to become righteous. All right? All right? They were, they were things established to make it so you could be righteous before God. So, committing murder is wrong before, during, and after the law. Okay? Well, I'm under the curse if I don't, if I, if I want to commit murder and I don't, and I, because I did the law. No, stupid. Now, why are you being ridiculous with that? Because people go along and say, well, I don't have to tithe, I don't have to give, I don't have to go to church, I don't have to do this, I don't have to do that. Because that's the law. You've missed the whole point. The whole point of redemption and Christ coming to fulfill the law and remove us from the curse of the law is so that we cannot do the things we shouldn't do and we can do the things we should do because we're in a relationship with God who empowers us does it force us to? Because you still have to cooperate. Well, I don't buy that. New Testament scripture, Hebrews chapter 10. But they did not enter into rest because they, 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 the, word, the word did not profit them not being mixed with faith. <clears throat> James says, show me your faith without works. I'll show you my faith by my works. Literally, he's saying, it, listen, this kind of teaching where, you know, I don't have to do anything the law says. Nothing. Why? Because your flesh likes that. Your flesh likes, I can sleep and don't have to go to church and I still get blessed. I don't have to tithe. I don't have to give. I'm still going to get blessed. I can commit adultery. I'm free of forgiveness. Hello? I can go out and shoot my neighbor in the head and still go to heaven. Because you know, the law said thou shalt not commit murder. Uh, actually, it says thou shalt not uh, take innocent life. Because people always use that scripture for the death penalty. Yeah, God said don't commit murder. You're not murdering with somebody when justice has been handed out. And it's the penalty for your actions. What's to lock anybody up? Now, look, the same bunch that's against the death penalty is for abortion. Why? Because they're of the devil. All right? So, understand that um, cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things that are written of the book of the law to do them. So, if you're if your if your attempt to achieve what only Christ can provide is to keep the law, then you got to keep the whole law. Because every and if you miss on one point, you've missed on all of it. <coughs> if you if you if you fail in not thoroughly roasting the sacrifice, then you're guilty of murder. If, why? why? Because you're going to be in the same state. You're still going to be unrighteous. And unrighteousness receives the same penalty as unrighteousness. Your actions are not the cause of your penalty. Your spiritual state is. So, 
if you did not thoroughly roast the sacrifice and all the inner parts and all this and all that and didn't do what you you violated the law and are just as guilty of breaking the law as the man who committed murder. Because all of these things that the law said were to bring you into righteousness. Now, understand all of these things that the law said had to do with God's moral code. Not taking his name in vain was part of his moral code. Not committing adultery was, was part of his moral code. Not lusting after thy neighbor's wife was part of his moral code. You don't get to do them simply because you got over here in the New Testament and got saved by grace through faith. That doesn't automatically, okay, we're going to take, the, take all the restrictions off now. God doesn't have a moral code anymore. They, they completely missed the point that the law was given to show us what God demanded and that you could not achieve that through your works. So he sent forth his son who became the sacrifice for us so that we could fulfill his moral code through a faith relationship through Jesus Christ. It's still his moral code. I don't have to go to church. Oh, really? Forsake not the assembling of yourselves to, together as is the manner of some. Amen. All right. So I, I, I get frustrated sometimes with people's narratives when they jump on something that's so extreme and all they does is, you know, you know, the Bible tells us not to make an occasion to the flesh. And what we've got, we got a lot of preachers preaching and selling tape series that tell their people how to make an occasion to the flesh under the guise that they're already forgiven. It doesn't matter. And make a lot of money. Why? People, people, throw, you know, people throw money at stuff if it makes, if, if they, you're, they're marketed right or if they're, you know, get exhilarated enough by it. They'll go to churches that don't even preach the truth just because it's got the coolest, raddest stuff going on in there. So, we want to be well learned in the scriptures so that we can be a blessing in the earth. Amen. All right. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident for the just shall live by faith. The law is not a faith, but the, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Okay? This is a shift, a major shift in narrative from what Paul grew up, what Paul was trained under. He was a doctor of the law. Uh -huh. He had his jurisprudence in the law of, 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 the, of the Old Testament. Okay? Okay? trained and sat at the feet of one of the highest uh, recognized um, scholars of the law in their day. Well-versed. And now he, he has this revelation that we're redeemed from that. Not so we can live after the flesh, but after the Spirit to be led by the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit. And the Spirit will not lead you to violate the Father's law. Amen. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. So now to Abraham and his seed 
where the promise is made, he saith not, and to seeds, plural, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law was 430 years after, cannot disannul or make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be the law, it is no more promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. The law was to show them they missed it. They totally missed it. Okay? Listen, we took, we took Azusa Street and turned it into, um, you know, an event and everything and totally missed the spirit. You know? We tarry for the Holy Ghost. I got the baptism. And quit! Now, if you didn't grow up classical Pentecostal, Jerry did. He, he grew up church of God of prophecy, right? Or... Later on, okay. He, he, he was in church, got a prophecy. Anybody else Pentecostal, Pentecostal growing up? Simmons of God, Church of God, Church of God of Prophecy, Sim, uh, Pentecostal Holiness, you know, Church of God in Christ. Actually, the original Pentecostal denomination was Church of God in Christ. Um, black denomination. And the Simmons of God people, well, they weren't Simmons of God at the time, were going to their meetings and said, we need this. We need our own, we, and this racism was still there, but we need something for our people. And they blessed them to go, and, and, and so they started the Assemblies of God. Four Square Church, okay? And we institutionalized it and started getting hung up on our doctrines. I grew up in PH, and we, had, we differed from the Assemblies and the Church of God because we believed the sanctification is a second definite work of grace. You go to the altar and pray until you got wholly sanctified. And some of the others believe that sanctification was a progressive work in your life. And it really is. You don't go down to the altar one time and all of a sudden you sanctify and that's it. All right? So we started, they started taking off their jewelry. The women couldn't cut their hair. And they couldn't put on makeup and all this kind of stuff. They institutionalized and created law on a promise of the gift of the Spirit. Brother Hagin said he was pe one time preaching and ministering, and one day uh, <coughs> we were in a church that had been down in front, gotten baptized in the Holy Ghost, and been praying for in tongues for a while, went back and sat in a seat, and one of the deacons came in late. Went down, sat next to her, and said, Sister, you take that wedding band off, God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. Brother Hagin said, Too late! Done done it, ring and haul. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, we did that with redemption. We tried to take the promise of the Spirit, and we lived on the law instead of teaching people to be full of the Spirit, be led of the Spirit, and walk free from what the law told you not to do. Because you're trying not to do the things the law says out of your own efforts. And I'm just going to give you a clue. It's a two-word clue. I hope it sets you free. You can't. You can't do it in your power. And even if you are with, with, uh, withstanding from doing certain things, the drive and the pull is still there, and you're fighting it with your flesh, and if you such as give in for a moment, it grabs you because you're trying not to with the flesh. Instead of living in the spirit who will lead you away from those things, who will satisfy your soul. Amen. He satisfies that soul with good things. Amen. And calls you to walk by your relationship. Excuse me, I'm having a little bit of hickey burpees going on in here. We ate chili tonight, and I, it was good. But it's wanting to you know, talk to me a little bit. If 
I should have stopped with the first bowl. <laughs> but it was just too good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Did you put your flesh under? No. I said, the Bible says to buffet your body daily. <laughs> I think buffet is what it really says. That buffet. You know? Aren't you glad there's not that many buffets anymore? <laughs> we would travel to Tulsa, and we would go to Little Rock, Arkansas. We, that, was our, that was our 6 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning stop. And they had a Shoney's all-you-could-eat buffet back in the day. I would eat enough and wouldn't need to eat until sometime that evening. <laughs> Got my money's worth. So we were living on a budget. We didn't, we didn't stop and get a hotel because we couldn't afford one. We had enough money to buy the gas to get to Tulsa to go to, you know, uh, alumni week or, you know, camp meeting or something and get the, the French Villa Hotel. It wasn't a French Villa. French probably ought to sue them for using the name. But it's all we could afford. You know? And we went to those meetings. So, and we had to eat cheap. We, we didn't get to go eat steak. You know? We didn't. I mean, we were eating cheap. We were eating, um, Ma uh, not Mazio's. Yeah. It's, Mar it's Mario's around here, isn't it? Yeah. Mazio's out there in Oklahoma. You know? They had, they had cheap pizza. Everybody loved it. It's gone downhill since then, but it was really good back in the day. Yep. Hallelujah. You can eat a lot of food when you get a big pizza. All right. I'm rambling now. Well, wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained of angels in the hand of a mediator. Now, a mediator is not a, me a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. No. Which, um, for, if there be, if the, uh, for if there had been a law given, which could have given life, ver verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise, hallelujah, um, by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified. But after faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Oh, what's this saying? Let's, let's not jump in there and go, yeah, I don't have to do anything the law said. I'm not telling you. The law brought you to Christ so that you could be delivered and walk free from what the law said you couldn't, you couldn't and ha or had to do, what you had to do or what you couldn't do, that you could not do by the weakness of your flesh. And so the law was given to show you your utter inability to do what the law demanded. So that you would come to faith in Christ and be able to do what the law demanded by your relationship with him. For all, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. And for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Now there's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Now what? He strips away. A, a hierarchy of gender. In other words, you know, in Christ, men are not superior to women. We have societal hierarchies, but we don't. But in Christ, there's not. In the things of God, we stripped away ethnic hierarchies in Christ. Okay, you're not superior because you're a white Christian over a black Christian over a Latino Christian. Hello. And I'm going to get, I'm, I know this upsets some people. Or that you're a Jewish Christian does not make you superior to a Greek Christian. Because he said it right here. There's neither Jew nor Greek. Hello. Okay. We, we try to make that. People do that. They, you know, they get kind of 
kind of into the Jewish thing. There are things to learn from Judaism about why things are in the New Testament. Because the New Testament is a continuation of that revelation that God was giving throughout the Old Testament. So you just can't throw it out. You can't throw out the Jews. Because they're the original God, covenant people of God. After the fall of Adam. So it's the Jew that were the uh, stewards of the things of God till Christ be revealed. Okay? So we can't just cut that out. Pretend it's not there. But now in Christ, the fact that you're a natural born Jew and born again doesn't make you superior to a heathen dog, heathen sinner who got born again. Because in Christ Jesus, there's neither Jew nor Greek. Okay? So we don't disdain the Jews, but we don't elevate them to a place of superiority in the new birth. They don't get to get stuff in Christ that we don't get. Their relationship with Christ is not elevated beyond what ours is. Okay? Men don't get a higher blessing than women. Different races aren't higher than other races. Actually, in the New Testament, there are only three that are represented. <clears throat> the Jew, the Greek, and the church of God. The natural descendants of Abraham still have a natural covenant that will be fulfilled. Because they will be grafted back in. So there's still the promise to them to be grafted in. There's the Greek, which represents all heathens. Now, heathen covers everything. I don't care what your ethnic background is. If you ain't saved, use a heathen. Period. So being a white heathen does not make you superior to a black heathen. Heathen is heathen. And you must be born again. You don't get a pass because most Africans and, and, and well, at least in uh, Southern Africa, were ancestral worship people versus the fact that you were a, came from a white European Christian background. You can come from a white European Christian background and be a heathen. You can come from an African um, ancestral worship background and be a heathen. You both have to be born again. And when you become born again in Christ, there's neither, Jew, there's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither heathen. There's nothing. You're in Christ. You become, body, you become part of the body of Christ. So there's no hierarchical positioning in the body of Christ because of your ethnicity, because of your gender, because of anything. Period. Amen. Now, if ye be Christ, then he Abraham's seed. Now, remember back over in verse 16, he said he didn't make the promise to Abraham's seeds, but to his seed, which is one, that seed is Christ. So if you be Christ, what, you got to be born again? Then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. What was that God's blessing to Abraham? Assuredly, I will bless you and bless you and increase you and increase you. According to the Weymouth translation of Romans, I believe, 6, 14. Uh, I, assuredly, I will bless you and bless you and increase you and increase you. King James is in multiplying, I will multiply thee. And in blessing, I will bless thee. Okay. It's the blessing of increase and multiplication. But it's the blessing of increase and multiplication starting with spiritual things. You're in right relationship with God. Therefore, you have access to the blessings and the increase that he provides. Amen. And because you're in Christ and empowered by the Spirit, and when you're led by the Spirit, remember they're led by the Spirit of God, the sons of God. 
to in, in, in that context, there's a difference between being a child of God and being a son of God. Son represents maturity, grown up. Okay? We could be a child of God and not be a son in, this, in the terminology that was used there. Because you're, you're not walking in adulthood, spiritual maturity. You need to grow. That's why we disciple. We help people grow up. Amen? We want to train them to walk as a mature Christian. Now, for a Jew, in the natural, 13 years old is when they became a man, according to their beliefs. That's when they were, you know, they, were, they had to recite the law, so much of the law and all this kind of stuff. There's so much they had to do. And um, I, I'm not sure, I think it's the, that's the bar mitzvah, but I'm not sure. I, you know, I don't know enough about that to be accurate, so don't quote me on that, Daniel. Pastor Ed said, oh, the comedy's come out. All right. So here the curse has been, and really this is the curse. Let's sum it up. Let's, 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 let's just simplify the curse. Here's what God's demands are, and you can't do it. That's a curse. God's demands are this, and you can't do it. Isn't that a curse? I want to give you a million dollars, but here's the task you've got to do, and it's impossible for you to do it. There it is. There's the million dollars. But in order to do it, you got to lift a 747 and walk two miles with it on your back. It's an impossibility. I'm not talking about pulling it on down the tarmac with a rope tied to it, you know, and because you, you, you squat 700 pounds and you're moving it by getting it, momentum going. I'm talking about picking it up, strapping it to your back, and walking with it. It's impossible. And so that's a curse to you because you could have a million dollars if you could, but you can't. You can have the blessings and you can have this and you can have that. All the verses 1 through 14 of Deuteronomy 28, but you can't do it. You're incapable of keeping the whole law. You don't remember? If you hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, do all that he's commanded thee this day, then I will. That's a curse. But now in Christ, hallelujah, <clears throat> the blessings, we become heirs of the blessing to Abraham because we can do it. How? By faith in Christ Jesus. Because he fulfilled the law. And now by being in him, the law has been fulfilled. And so we, we now procure what God promised to Abraham, the promise of blessing and multiplication. Through faith. But what happens if I sin? You get it under the blood. Why? Because if our heart condemn us not, then have John. Remember John? See, asking God to forgive you and putting that whatever it was before the Lord saying, cleanse me of this, is not so God will come wash you with the blood of Jesus. It's so it will purge your conscience from the fact that you failed so you can stand with confidence before God. John does say, he says, but how blood of our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. And, it, you know, and if we know he hears us, then we know we had the petitions we desired of him. Well, now, we've got people trying to teach people that you're already forgiven, you don't need to repent. Because repentance is not for God. It's for you so that you get an action that was displeasing to him out of the way of you so your conscience doesn't have that sitting there. Amen. You don't have to go do penance. You don't have to grovel. You don't have to still be talking about 40 years from now. 
Amen. Uh, Siri, note to self, don't eat chili before church. <laughs> After church is okay, just don't do it before church. So now, we enter into this covenant by faith, which is a relationship, relationship lifestyle. Interesting, one translation, uh, I'm trying to think if it's Weymouth or Whirl, or um, there was another one. It might be, it might be Weymouth. He talks about law righteousness and faith righteousness in some of Paul's writings, you know. And so he'll, when he's referring to the law, he, he hyphenates it, law righteousness. And we're doing it by faith, faith righteousness. And that's the difference. So now, because we're out from under the curse, we can walk free from that. And if we miss the mark, we have an advocate with the Father. Who? Jesus Christ. And the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son, cleanses us or continue cleanses us from all unrighteousness. We're in Him. Okay? So any act of, of forget, asking God to forgive and asking, you know, to, is, is solely for the restoration of your conscience so you can stand with confidence before God. Okay? There's so much argument going on right now about do we need to repent, you know, and we, we don't need to repent, you know, and, and we just want to argue about that. But the problem with that is there's a lot of people when they don't, this nags at them, but they're told that they're not. See, we've made a law out of not repenting. You know, because if you're, if you're really un under grace, then you wouldn't need to. And, and, and for the life of me, I can't understand because people, they're three-part beings. Now, when you sin, your, your spirit didn't die and become lost before God and Satan become your spiritual father again. Okay. Um, you know, Dake's an, an, an analytical Bible, or annotated Bible, has a lot of good stuff in it. He blew that one out of the water. You know, X number of reasons a man can be born again again. Yeah, it's in his notes. Yeah. You know, I, I, 10 reasons, 13 reasons, whatever it is, that a man can be born again again. Can you be saved from drowning more than once? And he goes on like, that was, see, that's carnal. That's a carnal analogy that he's trying to apply to a spiritual principle. You don't die spiritually because you sinned. Okay. It didn't happen that way. Okay. Um, we just get get squirrely. But then we come back on the other side of it. And so we want to make sure no one feels guilty before God, and therefore you're you're already forgiven. You shouldn't it shouldn't bother you at all. But it does. How do you know it does? Because John wrote, "If your heart condemn you not, not God, not even Satan, your heart." So if it weren't possible, John wouldn't need to have written that by the unction and direction of the Holy Ghost. Y'all hear you going home? Okay. How many ready to go home? Don't raise your hand. I saw those hands out there on the internet. I was in the spirit in your, your living room. <laughs> Why did you raise your hand? You're already home. Okay. We come into Christ who fulfilled the law, breaking the curse, as it were. And this is a whole new take on this. Breaking the curse of the promises that have been given that you can't walk in. By him fulfilling that. And then bringing you into a relationship with him. And it's just as if you 
fulfilled the law because you're one with Christ. So now you are a procurer of the blessings of Abraham through faith in Christ. And again, that doesn't relinquish you from doing the right things that, the, that God wants you to do. That, that, listen, that's your flesh talking, honey. That's just your flesh. And it's nice and loud. Look um, right here in this same book. Over two chapters. Now, Paul starts, starts talking about circumcision and that kind of stuff, uncircumcision. The Judaizers come in saying that uh, you, you may be in faith in Christ, but you've got to be circumcised or you're not really saved. And I'm not going to be real crass here, um, but when Paul starts talking like along those lines, and um, I'm trying to see where he says it here. I think it's in this chapter. He says, um, basically, to those who believe that you have to be circumcised, um, I wish they were to all together cut off. <laughs> now, that's King Jimmy for sex change operation. Because that's what he said in the Greek. And not sex change, but he was talking about, don't stop there. Because if that's going to save you this... Now, I'm not trying to be crude, but that's what it says in the Bible. Paul was saying to them, if circumcision would save you, don't stop there. Because if you really want to be saved, don't just go ahead and get thoroughly saved. <laughs> okay? I know uh, we, we, don't, we don't talk about stuff like that, but that's what it says. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm not sure if it's in this chapter or not. Oh, yeah, here we go, verse 12. I would that they were even cut off with trouble. He ain't talking about them being removed. Okay? Pretty blunt. We so King Jimmy everything and make it flowery that we miss some of the really strong terms or the strong statements Paul would make. Okay? Um, Paul was not liked by some people. <clears throat> All right. Um, <coughs> look at verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, for they are contrary one to the other, so that you cannot do the things you would do. But if you be led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Here we are. Guys, you used to live under the law. But if you walk by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, uh, variance, emulations, wrath, seditions, I mean, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, of such like. That wasn't the full list. Um, and the such like, which I tell you before, as I've told you in time past, they which do this, such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Let's stop. You want the blessing of Abraham. If you walk in the spirit, you're not going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. We get people teaching people they can live in their flesh and still be blessed. They're wrong because it just says it right here. Now listen to this. Shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I gotta gotta believe from maybe the structure and the terminology he used. It's not talking about you can't you won't be saved. You won't get the blessings because you're walking in the flesh instead of the spirit, and your flesh is taking over and running everything. And you're violating all God's things that he's given you the spirit to empower you not to live those, those things. 
And then he, he, he comes with an um, antithesis to that statement, but the fruit of the Spirit is. Now, we know in the Greek there's, neither, there's not capitalization for the word Spirit. You know, we don't have a capital Spirit, so we can know that by looking at Paul's writings, he wrote a capital S. He was talking about the Holy Spirit. It's upper or lower. There's not. And the only way you know if he's talking about the Holy Spirit or the human spirit is by the context. Okay? But the fruit, and really this is talking about the human spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit doesn't grow, doesn't grow fruit. Your spirit grows fruit. Walking in the Spirit, led by the Holy Spirit, your spirit will develop and grow the fruit of the spirit of your recreated human spirit which are love joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance against such there is no law you're not under the law these things are not of the law they're of the spirit walking with god and they that are christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts if we live in the spirit let us also walk in the Spirit. We can stop right there. We live in the Spirit. Let us walk in the Spirit. Don't claim to be full of the Holy Ghost and go adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Can I ask you a question? Why would Paul say that if you were incapable of living in the flesh? As some teach. Because you're under grace, you can't. You're automatically going to live right. Paul said he buffeted his body daily. Amen? He said, I keep it under. I, not the Holy Spirit didn't keep it under. Jesus didn't keep it under. He kept it under. How? By that relationship with Jesus Christ, by the power of the Spirit, he kept it under. Amen. So we don't teach people that it's automatically going to happen. There's people taught, who taught faith in a way that it was just going to happen. Brother Hagin say, yeah, yeah, some people think they're going through life on flowery beds of ease. Getting the blessings of God is like ripe cherries falling off a tree. And he'd come back and usually say something like, bunk, Tommy rot. He said, he, and then he'd say something like, you know, that's an old uh, West Texan colloquial expression. I found out about 90% of his West Texas colloquial expressions were Eastern Carolina colloquial expressions. And we were here first, so we were saying them before they were. <laughs> say, well, Dad, we say that out in Eastern Carolina. Hello? But it, you know, if you were natural born Texan, it don't matter. Texas did it first. I hope Pastor's not watching, but he's a natural born Texan. Hallelujah. So this redemption from the curse has now brought us into this place of relationship with God where now we walk out of that relationship free from the curse of not being able to appropriate the promise which could only come through faith in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Isn't that good? I don't have to figure out how not to do certain things I walk in the spirit I let the spirit lead me I pray in the spirit I spend time in the spirit and he will not lead me to do those things I mean I've heard some people I mean some of your Calvinists say some of the dumbest things God made him a prostitute so he could show his grace 
He made them go out and turn tricks so he could save them. Everybody say stupid on steroids, SOS. I know you think it means save your ship. It means stupid on steroids. You know, dot, 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 dash, 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 dot, dot, dot. Isn't that, isn't that right? SOS. Hallelujah. All right. Y'all get anything out of that? Hallelujah. We want to grow. We want people, you know. Now, listen, let's get excited about coming to Bible study as we did about Shekinah glory. There's, a, there, there, there's so many people out there who never heard anything we said tonight. Never heard it. Never heard the gospel preached that way. They have no clue that the struggles they're dealing with are because they don't know how to live in a relationship with Jesus. Oh, well, they love him, of course. But they've been taught that he's doing it to them and that everything's going on in their life is because God planned it that way. And so they don't know how to overcome what God told them not to do. And now, through Jesus Christ, we overcome through being led by his spirit, walking in his spirit. Amen. Renouncing the hidden things of darkness and walking in the light. Amen. All right. Let's receive our offerings. You got an offering envelope there on the back, back, back of the seats in front of you. If you're giving electronically, go ahead and dial that up. Hit the little send button on your phone or on the app. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless the people as they tithe and give into the kingdom of God. May the blessings of God overtake them, overshadow them. And cause them to uh, walk in full supply in every arena of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Go ahead, Brother Joe. See you in-house. Hallelujah. And thank all of y'all for joining us tonight. Remember these words from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. That whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We love you. God bless you. See you next time here at Expedition Church of the Triad. Good night.